Now that we have the computational graph constructed, we're all set to executing it. So what we'll basically do is to create a session and train the convolutional neural network on the data set, the MNIST data set. Okay, so let's start with the steps or iterations we'll have to go through. Uh, now I've ran this a couple of times and I found that 180 iterations or epochs provides uh, decent performance. So let's see, we'll say steps equal 180. Make some space here first. And uh, then we'll have to create a session, initialize all variables and um, uh, run the training process. So we'll say with tf.session as sess, we'll start with sess run uh, tf.global variables uh, initializer. Okay. Then we'll go through the training uh, process iteratively. So we'll just say for i in range, range steps. So for i in range of steps or epochs, uh, and we'll work with batches. So batch is going to be mnist um, train next batch and we'll feed uh, 50 samples each for each batch. Um, and what we're going to do next is uh, to print the progress at every 10 iteration or steps. So we'll just say uh, if i modulus 10 equals equals 0, the train accuracy is going to be sas run accuracy, which we've defined previously. So it's over here, accuracy, and we're going to feed dict. X is going to be batch zero. And the Y is going to be um, batch one. And we'll use keep prob, which is also which has also been defined previously. So keep prob is, is going to be 1.0. So keep prob is defined here. We have a placeholder for it. And I've explained what keep prob is uh, previously in this series. Anyhow, so keep prob equals one. Okay, now we'll uh, print step training accuracy. Okay, and format, we're going to use, so inside step over here is going to be I and inside training accuracy is going to be train accuracy. Okay, um, and then we'll have to run the train step, which was also previously defined. So the train step over here. Um, so we're going to use the Adam optimizer. So let's say sess run, we'll run the train step. And this time we're going to feed the dict um, x, the same thing batch zero. The y is going to be batch one. And the key prob is going to be 0.5 now. So let's say keep prob. 0.5. Okay, so with key prob, we're actually controlling the dropout rate. Now we'll uh, reshape both uh, x and y. So let's say, um, so we'll reshape the test data. Uh, MNIST test images reshape. And we're going to reshape 10, 1000 samples and 784 for the image size. And Y is going to be the same thing, MNIST test labels this time. And we're going to reshape 10, 1000 and we have 10 categories in which uh, 
10 categories for our output, so 10 labels. Um, okay, and then we run the accuracy on the test samples um, and we'll do a list comprehension. Um, so if you want to understand list comprehensions, there are many tutorials on YouTube and also on your, uh, if you search with your uh, preferred uh, search engine. So uh, we'll say test accuracy. So we had train accuracy and now we have test accuracy. So train accuracy, no, we have accuracy. And now we have test accuracy is going to be numpy mean um, ses run accuracy feed dict. And this time x is going to be, what do you think it's going to be? It's going to be x, x of i, and y, the labels, uh, is going to take data from yi. Okay, and we're gonna use a dropout rate, so keep prob of 1.0. Okay, um, so since this is a list comprehension, we have for i and range 10. Okay, should be good to go, I guess, if there are no errors. And uh, ultimately, we'll, uh, we'll print the final accuracy which uh, let's say print test accuracy accuracy okay format test accuracy okay now if there are no errors we should see uh, if we run this, we should see the actual training process. So once again, remember that we use the atom optimizer in this case. Now let's run it. So shift enter to run it. So we have if I modulus 10, we have, this is not JavaScript. So only two of them. Okay, so we have very, very, uh, very low accuracy. Let me run this one, one more time. Clearly, I guess I missed something, but I'm not really sure what we should get higher accuracy for this. Okay, so I guess the issue was with indentation. Um, and now it should actually run all right. Anyhow, so until this one runs, uh, once again, I have to thank Tom Hope uh, for inspiring these uh, tutorials. So uh, in actuality, we're following the curriculum in the book in the deep learning textbook that's linked in the description. So just a little more until it finishes. As you can see, it runs, um, the training goes up and down and it'll probably be at, I don't know, 85, 90, um, while the test accuracy should be a little bit higher. So 93, which is actually really decent. So now we should have the test accuracy in a moment. Okay, so uh, the test accuracy is actually a little bit lower, but pretty decent. So as you can see, we have somewhat a good performance for the training and test subsets. Now, overall, we didn't have to write too much code to train a convolutional neural network. So in review, um, this is kind of all the code that we have to write. So from we, we started with the helper functions, then we wrote the computational graph, and then we executed here. So not too much code to train a convolutional neural network with uh, decent results on a CPU. 
So uh, running uh, the training for more steps and or trying optimization procedures will most likely enhance uh, these results. Anyway, uh, so that was a convolutional neural network with TensorFlow in a nutshell. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.